Today I am going to talk on Upanishad Sutta, which you can you can find in Anguttara Nikaya, uh, eleven uh, chapter. That's called Eka Dasaka Nipata in Anguttara Nikaya. This sutta is called uh, Upanishad. Uh, it has a very deep, powerful meaning, like uh, dependent origination. Uh, it has given a series of steps that we have to follow. Uh, this uh, begins with the uh, analogy. I like to make an analogy. The analogy is uh, a tree. Uh, when you look at a tree, you can see the leaves, big canopy, branches, uh, then uh, you can see barks, Softwood, hardwood, and roots. But the whole tree uh, is not uh, made up of one of these components. The leaves themselves don't make a tree, uh, branches don't make a tree, barks don't make a tree, and so forth. But even the root it itself doesn't make a tree. But the roots are extremely important. The whole tree stands on root, it has to be very firm, strong, steady. For the whole tree, how, no matter how big it is, if the roots are very strong, very powerful, you can uh, depend on the tree's uh, steady growth. Similarly, the Buddha said the roots are the the roots are similar to or compared to uh, morality, ethical moral principles, which uh, I translate into as. Uh, spiritual habit, wholesome or skillful habits. There are habits, some habits are called unskillful, they are kusala sila. Wholesome habits are called kusala sila. You can see in uh, Samana Mandika Sutta in Majjhima Nikaya, Buddha has used these two terms to explain the meaning of sila. Anyway, this is the moral principle on which everything depends. One who observes these principles, the mind will not be shaken. Mind will not be free, not be full of uh, regret, remorse. Uh, so when you go to sleep, you can sleep well, get up well. At night, you will not have nightmares, because your moral habits are good. Whenever you reflect on your day's uh, life, how you spend your day, you have no regret. With this, reg without uh, regret, you sleep, get up well. Then, as a result of that, you next day you will be very. Uh, happy, full, you are you're full of joy. The joy, with joy you live, uh, observing the same moral principles, ethical principles, then you will be very calm and relaxed and peaceful. Tranquility arises. It happens naturally. You don't have to wish to be calm and relaxed or uh, uh, free from remorse only if you observe the moral principles. It happens to you naturally. That is the nature of Dhamma. When you have this calm, relaxed, peaceful, joyful state, then uh, you become uh, happy. Happiness also arises naturally in the mind, which is free from remorse and which is full of uh, uh, calm and peace and relaxed state. This happiness, we have to remember the difference between happiness and excitement. Some people uh, equate happiness with uh, excitement. When excitement arises, you will laugh, jump up and down. Suppose you meet your friend whom you have not seen for a long time, your relative, your friend, you get a job, you touch a lottery, get a lot of money and so forth, you will be excited and say, I am happy, I am happy. That is not happiness, that is excitement. But when, we, when you have this uh, happiness based on moral, ethical habits, wholesome habits, then your mind is very calm, relaxed and peaceful. There is no, there's nothing to agitate you, excite you, because you are very calm and peaceful. And that calm, peaceful, relaxed state gives happiness naturally. When you are happy, you don't have to wish to be, to gain concentration. Buddha said the uh, Concentrate, happy mind uh, naturally gains concentration. Sukhi no chittang samadhyati. 
when you gain concentration, you don't have to wish to see things exactly as they are, because then that also is the nature of your mind, or nature of Dhamma. Dhamma, they are, we don't need any uh, agent, somebody to initiate Dhamma in you, because Dhamma is there. Uh, it uh, happens when the natural, naturally the mind is, uh, get, mind gains concentration. When you gain concentration, uh, you begin to see things exactly as they are. Concentrated mind see things exactly as they are. That's why Buddha said, samahitang chittang yataha bhutang pajanati. We repeat these phrases, these sentences many times, heavily loaded sentences, without explaining the meaning. To see things as they really are is a very big uh, sentence. What do we mean by seeing things exactly as they are? That simply means not uh, seeing outside things, but suppose you want to see yourself in a mirror, you cannot see yourself exactly as you are. You will see your eye, left eye on the right side, left hand on the right side, and if you write uh, may, M-A-Y, on a piece of paper and hold it against the mirror, you will see yam. You wrote may, but you will see yam. So similarly, even the mirror cannot give you a real picture of the object. And therefore, when you gain concentration, you see not external objects. External objects has, have their shape, size, color, height, and so forth. But this is this are very superficial way of seeing. The real deep seeing is, uh, is, is you, you get when you have concentration. Through the, with the concentration, what you see <clears throat> is uh, your body, feeling, perception, volitional formations or thought, and consciousness. These are the things you got to see because these are the things that bring all problems, all troubles, all remorse, all regret, all suffering. All the problems arise from these five. And when you see them exactly as they are what you see, you see them changing constantly, consistently, without any alternative. They change without giving you any prior notice, no prior announcement or eviction notice. It happens naturally by itself. And therefore things are permanently impermanent. When you see things permanently impermanent, then next natural dhamma arises in your mind. What is that? Viraga. The mind is not trying to hold on to this changing object. That is called a desire uh, to hold on to something. Viraga means no greed, no attachment, no clinging. When you see these things happening, you take it easy, you let it happen. And you go along with the happening. There is no way to stop this happening, these changes. And when you let go of that greed, you are free from pain, remorse, and uh, suffering. This is what the Buddha meant in the uh, Four Noble Truth. The cause of suffering is greed. Greed for what? Greed for impermanent objects. What are the impermanent objects? Our body, feeling, perception, thoughts, or volitional formations, and consciousness. So, to wrap up the discourse called uh, uh, Upanisha Sutta, I must say it is just like a tree. Everything it happens very naturally. <clears throat> Okay, so everything happens very naturally and you don't have, don't have to wish, you just have to follow the first step, that is the moral, ethical, wholesome, skillful habits. So that is the end of the discourse and I hope you will enjoy it, you will learn something practical in the Buddha's teaching.